Okay, so if you just got done watching the video, the first video of 7.1, you saw the addition rule, okay? And going back to our two situations, the addition rule, the keyword was or, and there was only one action happening. Multiple outcomes could happen, that would be considered a success, but only one action, pulling only one card, rolling the die only one time. This video is under look at the multiplication rule. More than one action, those actions ought to be connected by keywords then, end, and in a row, Okay, thinking, okay, I'm going to do one event, now that another event is going to happen. What we're going to have to think about, independent and dependent events. So here we have the multiplication rule. And when multiplying all the events together, you're just going to line them up, multiply right across. So you have your probability set up and multiply across. Okay, multiple events are going to happen, so I can't tell you how many, it might be two, three, four. You have calculators, just plug it in, and again, I'm going to ask for percentage answers rounded to three decimal places. So first we're going to think of independent events, and these are events that are not related. Okay? Whatever happens in the first event is not going to change the outcome of the second event. That second event does not change the outcome of the third event. These are not related. What's the chance of pulling a king, putting it back, then pulling another king? So right there, we have a couple key things to point out, okay? We have our keyword then, that's showing that we're multiplying. We also have that phrase, putting it back. Okay. Now what that's doing is making it an independent event. You put that card back in, we still have 52 total cards. You got a king the first time, you put it back in, there's four kings still in that deck. So this is gonna be considered an independent event. So I'm gonna look at my two events. We have pulling a king. So just like for the addition rule, I'm just gonna set these up. Pulling a king is four out of 52. Four kings, total of 52 cards in a deck. Then means we're gonna multiply. And since I put that back, when I think about the second king now that I have to pull, there's still four in the deck, and there's still 52 total. So right there's my multiplying. So my answer's gonna be a little smaller than for the addition rule. For this one, I have it as 0.592%. Okay, so a pretty small probability in that case. So take your time, especially if it shows up as scientific notation on your calculator. One trick is if it shows up as scientific notation, just to suit with your answer still up there, after you plug in 452 times 452, hit times 100. That moves your decimal place and changes it to a percentage. Okay, so there's an example of independent where the two probabilities did not affect each other. Okay, here we have if the events are related, they're considered dependent events. Okay, what's the chance of pulling a heart, not putting it back, then pulling another heart? So right away, I'm going to circle my keyword. Okay, and again, we have that phrase. We have not putting it back, which is gonna be important for when we're thinking about what our second probability is going to be. So let's look and do this problem and see what happens. So what's the chance of pulling a heart? There's our first event. We know that there are 13 hearts and there's 52 cards. The keyword then means we're multiplying. And now the second part, since we didn't put that card back, it says pulling another heart. Okay. Since we took one heart out, there's no longer 13. We didn't put it back, so there's only 12. Same thing with the total. We took one of those 52 out, we did not put it back, so it drops to 51. Okay. This is what makes it a dependent event. The, event of the outcome of event one did change the, outcome, uh, the probability for event number two. Okay. Doing these up, I have 5.8. 82%. Okay. So there's our independent dependent events. Okay, that's what you're gonna need to think about. Again, I circled the keyword. I, again, I think it's good once we're starting these, circle the keyword so you know what probability or what computation you're going to need to do to get your probability. The survey was taken on how much you enjoy bubblegum flavored toothpaste. Nine out of 11 men enjoyed it, and four out of seven women enjoyed it. Now, 
This isn't saying we had 11 men and nine of them enjoyed the flavor toothpaste. These are what I consider a population parameter. This is talking about the whole population. So pretty much giving us a proportion of the population that enjoy it, that enjoy the bubblegum flavor toothpaste. So these probabilities, that nine out of 11, they're not going to change. These are all going to be considered independent events because these parameters talk about the whole population. And if you think about it, if you think of all the people in the world and you take one person out, is that really going to change the population too much? It's so big that it's not going to have much effect. So we're not going to keep the nine out of 11 for the men, the four out of seven for the women, that's not going to stay the way it is. So when we look at these problems, what is the chance of picking, of randomly picking three men in a row that enjoy the flavor toothpaste? So we have our key phrase, not just word this time, it's in a row, meaning I'm doing something multiple times in a row. Okay, and it's saying three there, so we know what we're looking for. Okay, so again, we saw multiply across. Now, nine out of 11, again, that's not changing for the next person. We just want that first person is nine out of 11. Our next event, it has no effect on it. So it's on a stay, nine out of 11, nine out of 11 for the third. And we're just on multiply right across. Another way you could have plugged this in, Nine out of 11 to the third power. Just make sure you keep that fraction when you're plugging it in, you use those parentheses. Uh, for this, I have 54.771%. Okay, so in a row means we're multiplying them. What's the chance of picking two women that enjoy it and one other man that enjoys the toothpaste? So yeah, it doesn't, it's not saying in a row, it's saying and meaning we're going to think of all this at one time. And what it means is, I mean, just thinking of what you would do, like visualizing. If you walk up, you're picking someone. You're picking another woman. There's your two actions right there. So you know you're on multiply. Okay? And then we also have the third action of picking a man that enjoys the toothpaste. So we're kind of mixing and matching here. For the women, we have four out of seven. Four out of seven, there's our two women. And then nine out of 11, for the men. So there's our probability for this one. So again, we have 26.716%. Now notice, for all the times for these two problems, we said we're picking three men in a row. All three men enjoyed the toothpaste. We said two women, both women enjoyed the toothpaste. Okay, That's kind of important. I want you to think about that for a little bit especially when we get into the binomial section of this chapter, okay? So there's 7.1, that's some basic probability that you're gonna need to go moving forward.